Radio Shouty. Chris Cross. Yeah. Two young brothers, Chris Smith and Chris Kelly. Yeah. What was it like DJing with them when you first met them? And did you think that they were going to go on to be a global phenomenon at the time? Well, what happened was they became a phenomenon before I actually got with them. That's how fast it happened. My God. Well, I, the same time damn near Arrested Developments Tennessee comes out, and I'm riding away with them, like in the terms of excitement. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with. I had met Chris and Chris, I think, one time at the Coca Cola Rock Coca Cola Awards. Yeah. Kikilo won that year, <laughs> right? I don't know how many awards. They may have done that once. Yeah. But that's when I met Chris, Chris and Chris. Um, didn't know I would be DJing for them, and I didn't know about their records. Their album was already done. They were going to put out a song called Boys in the Hood. It ended up being Jump. Mm. The record took off. See, Chris Cross was supposed to open for a band called Joe Public. Joe mm. Public was on the same label, Rough House Records, as Criss Cross. And even when Criss Cross performed on Arsenio, Joe Public was playing for Criss Cross. The record blew up so big that they went from opening to, for Joe Public to Michael Jackson asking them to come to Europe for the Dangerous Tour. That's when they decided they needed a DJ. Then they came and got me. My Three God. weeks later, my ass is in Europe. From, from going to rehearsal with, Chris, with Arrested Development, meeting Michael, getting my check. <laughs> <laughs> and then giving them my demo and stuff things came around Jermaine had heard me on V103 we had met I'd been playing JV and the straight jack and Silk Tom Leather we knew each other casually but my, again my crew was Arrested Development really I just wasn't in the group yeah. like that uh, so I didn't know Chris they were kids yeah. so we went to rehearsal I ain't know him we got to work we got on tour and that's how we got to know each other and Chris Kelly and I really really became really close all the way up his whole life. Exactly. Yeah. Now, Nabs, you find yourself in Europe, man. Yes. DJing on a Michael Jackson tour with Chris Cross, which was the hottest group at the time. What was that like for you? They knew Jump. It was an international record, and if you can picture it, even if you, a record about Jump, and it, it, it had Michael Jackson samples in it. it the, the record was crazy. And there wasn't a soul who, who didn't feel it then and who don't feel it now. So, so know that. So, but we only had that record in Europe. We had a 45-minute <laughs> show. So we had to do the whole album. Ooh. And I had a DJ set um, every night in between Chris and them shows so they could change, take a break. Yeah. Basically, they were great performers, but it wasn't a whole lot of talking to the crowd and trying <laughs> to – I had to do all that. And I – was coming from the club scene and not opening the mic. What? Because I, I see that's what I said earlier in my career. Club excess to Sandcastle. I spoke a little bit at Sandcastle, like it, it, the bar about to close. <laughs> I wasn't cranking the, the crowd up. That's somebody. That was somebody else's job. I was good with that. So, but when I got there, I had to be the adult. What was that like, Nabs? Now you on this tour. You know you got hundreds of thousands of eyes on you, and you're not used to cranking up that crowd. Not like that. Uh, stadiums, of course, for those that can't picture that. But, um, um, I mean, I just had my experience, and I just, I, just, I just went and did it. I had the footage. I looked back at it. I'm not, like, super hyped about it. I mean, I mean I'm saying I'm critical of myself. I was 20. Why the hell was you so damn critical? And then when you look back on that time, do you feel like that was one of the best times that you can recall in your career? Or how do you feel about that time, being in Europe with Chris Cross and Michael fucking Jackson? Let me say this. I'm going to say it like this. Michael Malden called me a music director in 1992, and I did not accept that title until many years later. I was on some DJ. with the group. As a music director, I did a hell of a job. To have never done that before, been on tour like that. I had motion sickness. I had motion sickness. I didn't even know I had motion sickness until I was on a ferry, on a boat. I mean, I was in a bus, in the bunk, sleep, on a ferry. Everybody else was off the ferry enjoying the ferry. I, was, I, I forgot we was getting on the ferry. I didn't know I was sick as a dog. Traveling, and to this day, traveling just makes me nauseous. I just have to do what I got to do. But, man, I did my job. Yeah. Through and through. And that's why I, I was there for everybody else. Escape, Brat, Bow, Jermaine, whatever. Um, but as a DJ now, the, the way I envision myself, you know, I'm, I'm still working on that craft because I'm, yeah. I'm a craftsman. That's, that's it. So that's why I'm critical of my DJ set, per se, but not 
my job. I was responsible for that. They left it in my hands. I ran the NPC. I, I ran jump live from a drum machine. And then I did warm it up from the turntables. And then I ran half the other show from a deck because they haven't pressed it on vinyl yet. And I ran the mics and, uh, you know. What was it like when you talked to that crowd, though, Nabs, and they just getting it. that feedback Michael and that Jackson energy, crowd, man? Boy. Talk what? to me. What? What? Listen, the good news is, even though our set was doing daytime on the Dangerous Tour, so, you know, we had three sets of lights, literally. Like, one, two, three, they were just one color. That's what the, you give an opening act, one color <laughs> light. You're just minimal, I mean, not minimal sound. You give them good sound. Yeah. Uh, so, mic come on, you know, it's got crazy. But I'm saying that to say those three lights mm. blinded me enough for me, the good news is that beat drop, I'm good. Yeah. It's a road map. That beat gone, I'm off the stage. Because there ain't nothing else for me to say. That's why I'm not really that hype guy at the, as much as I am. Even yeah. to this day, I had my period of it. But I'm, I'm about that whole experience, even on the radio. The experience of what it sounds like. Facts. You know, um, and that's me. So, Did you stay around to watch Michael perform? Um, we did... If we did 19 shows on that particular tour, I watched 15. <laughs> what was it like watching the King of Pop get busy in Europe? Okay. So I got tons of favorite stories. But um, I, I love the fact that when Michael would start dancing and he'd get caught up in the moment and he'd stop singing, mm. that I didn't hear no, 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 vo no vocals at all. I said, dude, it's real. Dead. They come, yo. Damn. And listen, I was on the science of... Uh, the production, right? At that time, I had an Akai 2800 rack mount sampler. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, they were stereo samplers, because before that, they weren't. So basically, all bass records that were made were made with a mono drum machine, SB1200, mm -hmm. for the most part. So a stereo sampler was a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, I did coochie cutters with a stereo <laughs> so on, on the bass compilation with that. Coochie cutters. Oh, so, so Michael had racks of them. Yeah. And they uh, at that time, you were limited by the sampler. so. He had racks of these samplers so that they could load all his vocals in there, his background vocals. Mm. So I'm saying that to say, um, have you ever been to a concert where they're kind of playing the track or playing <laughs> the song and then the vocals all over top of it, there's no, no mix? Yeah. So Michael's show was, this is just my interpretation, was mixed live on stage. Somebody was there handling the vocals, keeping them, his actual real vocals from the, every record, mm. you know, flying out. Live, yeah, they, they, they do it with Ableton now. So then, Greg Filling Game, the drummer, they playing live on top of it. So it's like they produce the record live on stage so they could change it, they could change the tempo, they could change everything. Yeah, so then now, now here's another good Michael Stage was here, mm -hmm. so did a bunch of performances. Performances, um, I'm gonna say this right, I must probably say it wrong, but <laughs> let's say he disappeared, something happened. He popped up on this level of the stage. Well, I don't know why I didn't know this level was up here, but it's up here. It's silhouette. Now he's got the hat, silhouette. He's doing Billie Jean, just a drum track. Yo, I love extended mixes. So they taking a time. Yeah. Boom, skit, boom, skit. Man, this is going, I don't know, five minutes. <laughs> the stage, he's still up here. Then it goes down here to the stage, then he finishes. I'm going to say it wrong again, but let's just say he disappears. <laughs> then it's Thriller. It's dark. It's a stadium dark. And he down here. It's a stage down here. Yeah. Now, they do the whole Thriller song here. I, I'm going to stop there. I mean, the man flew off stage. I mean, they, 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 they it's a trickery <laughs> at the end of the show. I mean, what y'all want me to do? Uh, damn, I got stories. 